Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with John Reclones, my review New Japan for Wrestling G1 Climax 28, Night 19, the finals, and my god, what a finish to the tournament it was. And I'll give my thoughts on the tournament as this video goes on. <clears throat> Make sure to check out my other reviews if um, you missed any of them. But also, just, I really want to know in the comments, I'm just going to say right off the bat, I want to know in the comments what you guys saw of this tournament overall. Taken as a whole, taken in the fact that all these talents, whether it was in tag matches, tournament matches, did give everything that they had. I really want to know what you guys thought of the tournament as a whole in the comments. So, <clears throat> great video package, uh, hyping how we got here, showing some great clips of like all the wrestlers, the shocking victories, the expected victories, the great matches, and the ones involving people like Tomohiro Ishii and Kota Ibushi, the Ishii, the MVP. You know, maybe Coda, the co-MVP. Maybe they'd be co-MVPs. But then we start off Kevin Kelly, Rocky Romero on commentary, who did fantastic fucking work. I can't put those guys over and up, honestly. Great stuff by both of them. I really hope that they do more uh, English commentary together. I think they got better chemistry than Kevin Kelly and Don Callis. But it, it, it is what it is. I mean, I know Rocky Romero still wrestles, but I think Rocky would just do tremendous being, <clears throat> you know, part-time wrestler, part-time commentator. But anyway, we start off with Makabe, Hanma, and Elgin versus Yuji Nagata, Shota Umino, and I, and forgive me if I get this wrong, Ayot, Ayato Yoshida. And I haven't been able to see enough of the Dragon Gate show, so I understand that he is part of, he is part of that. And he, he did pretty well. Nagata's good with the Young Lions when he teams up with them because they obviously respect him and he can bring a lot out of people. Because, you know, he's a great veteran and everything. It was a good mix. Fun. They had they had their good times. There was good exchange there were good exchanges. Makabe hits the King Kong knee drop on Yoshida. One, two, three. Certainly not a bad opener. <clears throat> and then we go to Hanare versus Bad Luck Fale. Hanare attacks Fale, does a little thing, and it's over Bad Luck Falls. And Bad Luck Fale beats him within like I three minutes. It might not even been three minutes. That that was it. Okay, cool. All right, whatever. Bad luck. Bad luck. Folly. Be I'm not saying Hanare should have won, but I was like, really? That that's where we're going with this? Why do we even have the match on the card? Why didn't you just slam him into another match? Well, you get to find out why they didn't put Folly with the Tongans later, and we'll get to that. Yeah, this this match was a little bit unnecessary, but it was what it was. And then um, <clears throat> we have Goto. And Yoshihashi versus Iska and Taichi. And Miho is back. And oh my god, great. One, she does add a lot to Taichi's character. She really does. One could argue she's the best part of Taichi's character. Um, but she just one, she she has a good look about her. She's beautiful. She just is. She really is. I mean, I I, I can't hide it. She just really is beautiful. And is is great to honestly see on TV. Or on your computer or whatever you watch this on. But yeah, it was this was an expected tag match with two of the lower guys uh, in, the, in Suzuki-kun, especially Izuka. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Taichi, it's really... It, he, his character, his in-ring work has improved a lot this year, and it really does show. Um, Izuka runs down while Goto and Yoshihashi are making their entrance and uses a chair and is wearing like some Hannibal Lecter mask that gets taken off and then he starts biting people later. Shocking is because biting people. Um, decent stuff. Tai Chi pins Yoshihashi and then attacks both guys. Uh, seems that Tai Chi also wants to get towards gaining another shot at the never open weight title, which I'm all for. I'm, I'm here for this. I think that they could have, they wouldn't have to involve Elgin, so maybe it would be a nice match straight up. And if they didn't have any shenanigans, which would be impossible with the Suzuki Goon um, member in a match, you could. I could see Tai Chi being the never open weight champion at, at some point. But don't get me wrong, Goto's going to get uh, other challengers because of the amount of losses that he took in the respective matches he had in the tournament. But yeah, it was it wasn't bad. I mean, anytime it goes in there, he's just basically there to be a comedy guy <clears throat> at this point. Even though he's a big guy, it's pretty much just for comedy. And then we go uh, with Finley and Juice versus Cody and Hangman Page. Cody kind of back to being the heel and everything. Not, you know, just, he seems like he wants to challenge Juice. Cody versus Juice for the U.S. title? Yes, please. Shut up and take my money. 
I, I will certainly be here for that. And Juice, also much like Goto, has a lot of challengers lined up because of the losses he took in the tournament. Both teams really do work well together. Finley and Juice, Paige and Cody, you can tell have a really good, have struck a really good friendship outside of wrestling and <clears throat> especially in the ring. It just, it just really does reflect. Uh, Cody ends up pinning Juice, big shock, and then this whole thing where he's holding the U.S. title. Okay, good. I'm, I'm, I'm for that. I think that is going to be tremendous. That is going to be a tremendous. That's going to be a tremendous feud. If Cody beats Juice, I'm not going to say I'll be shocked. But then again, Cody does. You know, Cody also works for Ring of Honor, so they're going to want to give their title to somebody like that. I mean, they already did with the Bucks and, and Marty Skrull. And oh wait, that leads us to the next match, which is Young Bucks and Marty Skrull versus Tamatonga, Tonga Loa, and uh, Ishimori. And at first. They were, you know, the, the Tonga, well, Tonga Loa was doing the introductions and everything, and okay, you know, like doing this, and wait, who are we facing? And they didn't remember. Well, you know, a number of months ago, a few months ago, Bucks and Skrull beat uh, the Tongans for, you know, the Never Open Weight six man titles, or the Trios titles, or whatever you want to call them. I call them six man titles. But yeah. So they're they're saying you know the Tongas are saying well you know maybe you should put those tiles on the line well the president just so happens to be there the new president and says hey you know why don't we do do you want to do that oh we can do that oh, okay cool big mistake but I can't say that it's the wrong decision to have the six man titles go back on the Tongans well I mean the you know Tama Tongaloa and uh, Ishimori. It did go all over the place. There was good work. I mean, you're going to get good. Anytime you get the Bucks and Skrull in the ring, as much as I may, as much as I'm 50 50 on the Bucks, calling out their spots and that kind of stuff, it works for them. But anytime you get them there, there's going to be a lot of really, there's going to be a lot of really good stuff and some really good tag exchanges. And the Tongans were being, you know, divide and conquer, those kind of number, you know, that kind of offense. And Tama Tonga being a great defensive wrestler. As commentators managed to point out, but yeah, they uh, you know it was, it was a it was a gun stun to Skrull and one two three. Since the Bucks and Skrull work for New Japan, there is no reason there was no reason to keep the titles on them for that long. And I get why they did it, but just to me, it just got to the point where you need to put it back on people that were actually in the company. Honestly, you need it's like. Yeah, they have a co-branding with Ring of Honor, and they trade talent and that kind of stuff. And and it works. Don't get me wrong. It works great for the companies. But you need to have, if you're going to have your belts not be defended that often, and six-man titles weren't defended that often, you need to have them on your full-time talents. So, okay, some people may not like the fact that the titles change hands. I'm glad they're back on the Tongans, because then you can have Rapogny 3K, Rocky Romero go for them. You can have other people go for them. You can have some trios go for them and take tiles off them to add a little even more of an edge to the Tongans. And folks, I'll be right back. Okay, apologies, folks. Just a bit of a quick break right there. But again, the Bucks and Skrull losing doesn't hurt them. They had had the six, uh, you know, never open point six man titles for a bit. Putting them back on the Tongans. Gets just a little more in the edge. And they even threw the titles down there at um, the feet of the new president. Because they were like, yeah, we got the titles and we don't fucking care. We're just going to create anarchy. My guess is they're either going to lose the titles soon or they're going to get suspended. And we're going to have new champions crowned in a tournament or something. Who knows? Um, but anyway. So yeah, it was, it, was a fun, it was a fun match for what it was, as you would expect. And then LIJ sends Hiromu. <clears throat> um, Hiromu Takahashi, obviously, as he recovers from his neck injury, and please, please, ho hopefully he re he recovers 100%. Sooner than expected, but the most important thing is 100%. But Naito, Evil, Sonata, and Bushi versus Suzuki Goon members, Minoru Suzuki, shocking, Sabre Jr., Kanemaru, and El Desperado. And this was, this was fun. It's LAJ versus Suzuki Goon again. They kind of cooled off this whole feud for like a bit. I think one of the last times that they had any kind of like interactions on any of these shows was April or very early May. And after that, um, <clears throat> they really hadn't had all that much because they focused on the best Super Juniors. 
and then also focused on, you know, the G1. So there wasn't nearly as many chances for this to happen. They still, they still had a fun, it was a fun match. I mean, it wasn't great. It was outside quickly. Shocking, I know. Um, lots of double teaming. There was a, some cool double submission spots with Minoru and Sabre Jr. attacking various LIJ members. Skull and uh, Kanemaru, and he got the victory. That, that's what that's what you're gonna get there. You're gonna get a fairly quick match. It's not like it was over in like three minutes, but it wasn't gonna be anything. This is a long tournament. <clears throat> Some of the guys in here had been in the tournament, and they need and they were going to keep it light. They were going to give the fans their money's worth, money worth, but they were going to keep it light. So yeah, L.I.J. gets a victory here, and then we go with Jay White and Yano, Yano and Tomohiro Ishii versus Kenny Omega, Yujiro Takahashi, and Chase Owens. Gee, I wonder who took the pinfall here. Unfortunately, it could have been Yujiro or Chase Owens, but it was Chase Owens who took the fall. There was some good comedy and stuff like that, and Yano and Omega having their stuff, and uh, Peter, or Piet, uh, Peter? Um, whatever, what, whatever her name is, I'm sorry, I, I tend to, um, not quite hear the name, the, the young lady that was with, uh, Yujiro, <coughs> the one with the bunny ears, um, she got in the ring at one point, and Omega's, like, <laughs> Omega and Chase are arguing, and Chase is like, no, she can stay here, Omega, no, she can't stay here, and got, gets her out of the ring, go, go, get out of the ring, and then they started more of the comedy. That, that that was a funny moment. I mean, I don't know. I'm 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 stupid with how I laugh at some of these things, but um Tomohiro Ishii pins Chase Owens and Ishii challenges Omega pretty much gets in his face saying, I want your belt. Because he beat him in the G one. He added he he put the first loss on uh Kenny Omega. So if they want to have uh, Ishii versus Omega at, like, I think they're having a U.S. special um, at the end of September, if I remember right. End of September, beginning of October. If that's the case, I'm here for that. And if they want to have that match there, hey, why not? Omega's going to help them expand to the U.S. And Tomohiro Ishii certainly deserves it. A way to give us <clears throat> a, tre a tremendous match. Especially after the great efforts that Ishii has uh, given us in this tournament. So, certainly not bad, and Chaos gets a victory. It was nice to see Jay White, Yano, and Ishii, three completely different styles, work really well together. That was pretty nice. And then you had uh, another six-man tag, and right before the main event. Um, you had Rey Mysterio making making uh, another, you know, appearance in New Japan and getting a big pop. Rey Mysterio, Kushida, that's a dynamite team right there, isn't it? And, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, Sengoku... Enbu, it's Taguchi in a mask, okay? It's Taguchi in a mask. I'm just going to say Taguchi in a mask because that's what it is. Now, at first when I saw the guy, I saw, the instant I saw the graphic, they showed the thing, I go, oh, it's Taguchi in a mask. All right, whatever. Eh, nothing else, Taguchi. It looked like he actually got in better shape. He had, he had tanned, but he had also seemed to have been working out. Not that he was out of shape or anything, but he looked like he was at least in better shape. I mean, it was just him in a mask and... Not that it wasn't obvious, you could tell by the eyes, but he started doing the hip check stuff, you know, you know, shoving his ass in people's faces, not like Rikishi, but he was doing that kind of stuff, and it was really, it was really entertaining, like, because it was nice to see Taguchi, but I'm not, I'm not, I like Yano more than Taguchi, like, as far as humor-wise, but Taguchi being back, you know, on TV, I didn't mind him doing this. Like, when it got too repetitive, like, you know, having to see him night after night after night, it got annoying. In small doses, he's fine. And he's also a damn good wrestler. He can do some really impressive dives. Okada, then they faced off against Okada and Rapogni 3K, by the way. And Okada and Rey Mysterio started out. If you're going to have that at Wrestle Kingdom, if, you, if there's any way to have that match at Wrestle Kingdom, Okada versus Rey Mysterio, yes. Please. Shut up and take my money. Like, honestly, I would, I would pop big for that. And I will, you know, barring un any unforeseen circumstances, of course I'm going to be watching Wrestle Kingdom in a few months. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to make sure I either ask for the day off, the the day off and afterwards or whatever. But anyway, Okada and Ray started off. That was really, really good. There were great tag exchanges. Kushida is just fucking dynamite. The guy's on a goddamn another level. 
Um, ran to pinning Yo, and that was fine. Hit the six one nine, and yeah, the crowd popped big. It wasn't it wasn't a great tag match, but it was fun and it had its moments. And Taguchi in the mask was entertaining. And then we get to the main event, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very honest here, guys. I I was actually it was pretty emotional because you could feel the emotion through your screen. With the crowd, because the crowd was split. They they loved Ibushi, they love Ibushi, they love Tanahashi. They know both men deserve it, not just because of what they've done in this tournament, but because of what they've given to wrestling, especially Tanahashi. People, you know, New Japan, I don't want to say it was on his deathbed, but New Japan had to come back from the dark ages, so to speak, like a lull that it had, and Tanahashi was at the forefront, and is still... Performing at a top tier level despite all the injuries, all the miles on his body, and all that stuff, and he's just doing so goddamn good. And it's amazing to see that a man that, quite frankly, maybe should take some time off, is not taking time off. I mean, he took like what five, six weeks off right after new uh, beginning of Sapporo, after he lost to uh, Suzuki. I think he was back actually within. I think he was back within uh, five, six weeks. But he needed, you know, some time off with his knee and stuff like that. And it was a good way to write him off. But just seeing Tanahashi and just seeing the stuff, just to the match. Tanahashi versus Ibushi. A block, ace block, winner versus B block. The Bushi block. The Ibushi block, if you will. Shibata was in Tanahashi's corner. Omega was in Ibushi's corner. That, I mean, that's not really a shock. It was great to see Shibata back in... A big arena. I mean, I know he's training. I know he's training wrestlers and this kind of stuff. And I don't think he'll wrestle again, <clears throat> nor should he. He's lucky to be alive. And that's not knocking a guy. It's just he's lucky to be alive. But that was some great emotion. There was knee focus. There was just drops on your head. Huge. I was trying so hard not to react like too loudly because I don't want to, you know, I, I, I don't I don't want to be that guy like shouting at my and shouting at my house at like two in the morning. My God, it was just great, and the emotion from the crowd started to get to me. I'm starting to well up, and that's that's saying something because that's just how great pro wrestling is. This is a match you absolutely have to check out. It helps if you've seen a lot of the matches that they've done in this tournament so far because you see the accumulation. Of all the hard work and all the st all the all the miles and everything, just from this tournament alone, but also in their careers, the cl the G one climax is a great tournament because you earn it. You fucking earn this shit. You goddamn earn it. Um, the exchanges are great. There was a you know great moon salt by Ibushi to the outside. A slap bite. I mean, they were just palm striking. That not Shote is like Liger does, but they were just palm striking each other. It was just friggin' brutal, and it looked like Tana was le like Tanahashi was legit hurt, like he's balling up like this kind of stuff and whatever. And I mean, which I can imagine hurts, but he, whew, he looked like he hurt, it, like his neck was hurt because like he was having some pins and needles and stuff like that. Hopefully he's okay. He seemed okay with the post-match celebration, but adrenaline and all that. Um, then Coda does the flip and does the knees to the chest again. It looked more brutal than the way he did to Omega the previous night. My God, it was just scary. Um, reversals were insane, and it looked like Ibushi was actually going to get the victory. I actually thought it was like, okay, Ibushi. I'm ha I was happy with either guy winning, but... Somebody um, in the comments, I'm sorry, I don't quite remember your name. I'm really, really tired right now. But thank you for um, being the one to, uh, to clearly predict that Tanahashi was going to get the victory. They said, oh, Tanahashi will win. And you were right. I didn't have a chance to comment on it because I've been busy. <clears throat> but it was great because three high fly flows. And, I mean, Mabushi had countered one before. But he hit one while Ibushi was on his stomach, and then hit another one while Ibushi was laying down, then hit, or standing up, and then hit another one, and Ibushi was down in one, two, three, and just, I can't put into words just how emotional it was. It was absolutely tremendous.
I'm not going to talk about it too much more because I don't want to well up on camera, but it was great. And that's why this review is going long, quite frankly, because I'm just putting over how great the tournament was. Yes, the whole thing with the Tongans was ridiculous. It got repetitive. I understood why they did it at first. But that the, those booking decisions aside, I'm not going to let that hide the fact or take away from the fact that this tournament, more often than not, like 85 to 90% of the matches were good to great. Now, there were some decent ones. There were some ones that weren't that good. You're going to get that in any tournament, especially something this long. 19 days. 19 days. That's going to happen. But hats off to everybody involved that just gave such great efforts. It was so tremendous. I will say overall, I'm going to give the tournament an A-. minus. Because, yeah, okay, the tongue and stuff and that kind of stuff, whatever, got kind of drug it down a little. But I'm not going to let that take take it down below an A minus. And I'm going to say for this show, yes, the tag matches were what they were, and but there were some nice teases of possible matches we're going to get at Wrestle Kingdom and throughout the rest of the year. So I'm going to say for the finals, I'll say an A minus. Yeah. I'll say anyway, this will be the first A- minus I've given that I'm going to give to like any of the tournament shows, at least as far as I can recall. I've mostly gone from B to B+. Plus. But this was this was just great. The Tanahashi-Ibushi match is just well worth watching. If, if you don't get emotional watching it, knowing enough about the tournament, if you can't get emotional watching that, I, I really don't know what to say to you. Because you could see the effort on their faces and just that they left everything in the ring. They really did. And that's what it's all about. And I don't think Japan, I don't think New Japan is going to be doing another show on their streaming service till sometime in September. I think September 7th. I'll check the schedule. If another one's going to be popping up in a couple of weeks, then I'll do, then I'll review that. But otherwise it's going to be the final New Japan review I do for about a month. But boy, boys and girls, men and women, thank you guys, fellow wrestling fans, so very much. For being along on this ride. I really have enjoyed interacting with you guys here on the channel. On on Twitter. It has been just such a fun ride. And the road to Wrestle Kingdom. Can, you know is on. And it's going to be fun. It's going to continue. And I can't wait to see what New Japan does. The rest of this year. Next year. Is everything perfect? No. But this company delivers great performances. More often than not. Anyway. What do you guys think of the tournament? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Also it's been Real Honesty with Joe Rintland. Check out my other reviews, by the way, WWE, movie reviews, that kind of stuff. But I will see you in September for New Japan, but I will see you sooner for a lot more reviews.